Hey everyone, Richard Metal Fan here, for you guys a brand new 2017 album review. And today we're going to be looking into the new album from the great, the almighty, Morbid Angel entitled Kingdoms Disdained, which came out today through Silver Lining Music Records. Now, I don't even need to introduce Morbid Angel. One of the pioneering in one of the well-known old-school death metal bands been around since the late 80s early 90s along with other great death metal acts from that time like cannibal corpse incantation emulation suffocation all all those good bands <laughs> these guys put out such classic albums like they had like some many different lineup changes like they mainly known for having david vincent on vocals and bass trey zagoth on guitars I uh, forget their old guitar, other old guitar player and drummer. They put out classic albums such as like Altars of Madness, Blessed Are the Sick, Covenant, and Domination. And then, but after Domination, I had like some other lineup changes. Like they got a new vocalist and bassist, uh, Steve Tucker, and and I think he's a really great. I think he's honestly, and in my honest opinion, I think he's better than Dave. To be quite honest, nothing against Dave, but I just think Steve just does it, takes it up that much. And they put out albums with him. During his first run with the band with the uh, Formulas Failed to the Flesh, Gateways of Annihilation, and Heretic, which, though, which came out in 2003, Heretic did. But then, flash forward eight years later, we were hyped up for another new Morbid Angel album, and they had like um, Return of David Vincent is back in the, that band, and they had a Destructor on guitar, and the great drummer Tim Young which I honestly think is a sick drummer, and then they put out, and I thought everybody was going to be hyped up for a new album, which they put out that god-awful album, Elude Divinum Insanus, which, ugh, I have no comment on that. That album is just bad, like, ugh. Like, it, they just went to, like, freaking shitty industrial metal. It's, that album was just so terrible. Like, it was like the Saint Anger of death metal. But then, now we, here we are six years later in 2017 with their new album, Kingdom Sustain. And yet, like, during that time, there's a different lineup changes. We had uh, Steve Tucker is now back in the band. And they got a new drummer, uh, Scott Fuller, which I've, which I think is a great choice. And I've actually seen some YouTube videos of him, and he's a really great fit for the band. But to ask us this question, does this album make up for that god-awful Elude to Venom and Sanus? In my honest opinion, I def think it definitely has. Like, Morbid Angel is back, people. They're back to making death metal, which is what they should have been doing in the first place, and not that god-awful album, which I'm not even want to talk about right now. Like, everything is where it needs to be. It's just so good. Like, I've just listened to it a couple times already, and my god, it is just so good. Uh, like the production is good. They work worked with uh, producer uh, Eric Rutan, who plays guitar for Hate Eternal, and he also produced some other death metal acts like Cannibal Corpse and stuff. Uh, what can I say about St and Steve Tucker? What can I say? His vocals are just godly, just brutal, and just the bass is pretty audible. You can definitely hear it well in the mix. Trey Trey's riffs on this album is just insanely just riff central. What can I say? This whole album is just chop full of riffs and the drumming what can i say about scott fuller he had some really big shoes to fill in after tim young left and my god i think he's a great fit for morbid angel and just like just his drumming and just it's just insane like morbid angel is back to making old school death metal like i said without further ado let's dive in this album track by track now the album opens up with piles of little arms which kind of starts off with like a typical riff from Trey before returning into some growling vocals from Steve. Steve, it's, it kind of starts off kind of mid pace before the much welcome return of like the fast blast beats will punches you in, in the fa face and just the song overall has its like moments, like especially when it's as fast as and Trey's solo being very unique as usual until to, to it like ends the song. I would say that, yep, Morbid Angel is definitely back. And then we go into Dead, or let's say D-E-A-D, -E just some crazy riffage throughout the song. It just really inspired stuff from Trey, like climbing the walls, or make you like to stare with your eyes wide open, and like your mouth wide open, like 
god damn and just this the structure of the song is really good i just really love the song um garden of disdained which opens up with a lightning fast attack stack before like crashing she can say like a classic kind of like mid-tempo just a gnarly crawling kind of ripped in there which kind of reminds me of something from like blessed or to sit yeah it, yeah it has that kind of like blessed kind of vibe to it it and overall a great song then we go into the righteous voice which starts off with a great riff from trey that then it goes with some insane double beast from scott this is simply kind of like the calm before the storm as all hell breaks loose loose and it seems like from the last track like steve is putting in a stellar performance in the, his run with morbid angel this new run and i have to mention that kept that scott's dr drumming in my opinion is better than tim's honestly just like the speed he can get to is just incredible just like the old school fans of morbid angel will be happy and the leads on the song is just so good like i don't think anybody can replicate it it, and I'm kind of getting like an overall feeling from like the song Visions from the Dark Side from Altars of Madness. Over, really good. Then we go into Architect and Iconoclast, which is the longest song on here. And it has like a bit of like groove, blast, and sheer power and velocity. I think this is the best song structure on the album and it kind of gets that old school vibe. Then Trey solos again are just swift but technical before Steve's vocals just sounded angry as he could possibly make them. Um... Next on the album, Paradigm's Warp starts off very slowly and emphasizing on a crunching riff that Trey shows and just the the vocals kind of like match the pace perfectly, although it's not as clear as its predecessor. For the first time throughout this album, mainly due to the fact that Eric Rutan loves to put the guitars first, we hear Tucker's bass which rattles the listener's rib cage. I don't like this song as it's slow, but you just have like the, the to hear the solo from Trey, which is a much longer lasting than those of the previous songs, but equally as technical. Um, then we go into Pillars Crumbling. Starts off really slow, but gives the opportunity for the drum drumming to show. And the song is slow to mid pace for around the first three minutes before the pace picks up, and then we get some unique guitar in there. Overall, some really good shit. For No Master is next, and it feels like Morbid Angel has enough with like the slow shit, and then certainly puts its foot to the accelerator, turns it up to 110. And I just really like the sound on this song. Um, like the chorus is amazing, and you can tell that all the punters at the gigs are like chanting along to it. So it feels like it goes along good with a live feeling. And it's just a really good and just insane double bass work. Um. Declaring New Law. Although it, the song is slow, but it sort of like brought back memories of like Domination era Morbid Angel, particularly with the track and give my favorite favorite song song of the album Caesar's Palace, although without the emphasis of the solos. The opening verse particularly hits strong lyrically about like bringing the state of the world before him and his rule. The tempo increases as the track progresses, but never reach the blast beat stage. So again, emphasizing the power of the riffs and the vocals from Steve. Um, from the Hands of Kings is next, and you know immediately that this song is going to be a fast one. The riffs at the start just get you like really pumped up and just the blast beats kick in. The album has a lot of like mid pace songs but i feel like this is a track that morbid angel will play live as well and it will get like the pits insane and the riff at like the minute and a half is so immense from trey and like steve's vocals are as angry as ever this is like classic morbid angel and uh, this is just a really good live song it'll pretty much get like some fucking mosh pits going and people banging their fucking heads and then we go into the last song in the album which is the fall of idols which starts off with some really good Good drumming it just gives like some really good strong blast beats the riffs are at full speed with with again again the, the vocals putting on like a strong performance and the pace doesn't stop here and it's just full speed from start to finish and i feel like it's just a great way to end this album just end it all with a bang so overall kingdom sustained by morbid angel was worth this th waiting six years to, for a great return to death metal oh, and i'm just really great that they're back to what made them once were just my god this it's really good if i were to give this album a score i'd definitely give this probably a solid eight out of ten it's that good but if you haven't heard the new morbid angel yet 
check it out and let me know in the comments what you guys think about it and I'll see you all in the next video and keep it metal.